from a game developer perspective, you have to remove the mindset of just short-term thinking in terms of what leads me to um, the biggest conversion rates, right? Because while that is good for like a game launch, it does nothing for you long-term. Now, in terms of conversion rates and like traffic to like say a, st- a Steam store page, right? You know, influencers and, and uh, having large influencers, medium-sized influencers and, and micro-influencers play, you, uh, you know, having a lot of those guys play your game on, on launch day is going to bring massive traffic and probably massive sales conversion to your site. Whereas having several top tier press websites review your game positively is probably going to give you a bump, but it's probably not going to be anywhere near as comparable to um, having a very large YouTuber play. Um, That said, however, there is something, there is inherent value in going the traditional media route because a lot of marketers will go, well, you know, say something like brand building is important, which a lot of people kind of glaze over their eyes and go, I don't, know what that means and that just sounds like marketing speech but it comes down to um longevity of a title and longevity of a brand in terms of not only the product's brand but also your developer brand right so having lots of media articles written about you in a positive way may not lead to a sale right there and then but it does lead to recognition in the fact that if you're trying to go from a, you know a small indie team who's making their first game and you're trying to make a, a games company and build and grow that company you're going to need that brand recognition to have success with the next game right so you know what will happen is there becomes a familiar a familiarity within the press and so you know if someone like you know say your average joe reads about your first game in GameSpot and Rock Paper Shotgun and PC Gamer, and then but isn't particularly interested in, um, you know the the type of game that you you presented for your first game. You know maybe you made um, a platformer and they don't like platformers, so they're not going to buy it, right? But they can see that it's been reviewed positively. However, the next game that you bring out is an RPG, and that's right up their alley, and they know. The, the first game that you made, because they saw it the first time around on all those websites, they know that you made a quality, high quality title the first time around. And so actually, this is going to be worth me looking into at this point. And so you have to play the game from multiple angles, right? You have to look at your long-term goals and you have to look at your short-term goals when, when really executing any kind of um, outreach strategy. Because yes, there are things that you will do that aren't going to pay off you know, until much later, but that does not inherently mean that they're not worth doing. It just means that you will see dividends later. Mm -hmm. Uh, A follow-up question to that. Uh, A lot of indie developers are kind of finding the balance when it comes to uh, exposure too early or the right timing overall, right? Uh, We know developers that since day one, uh, they have dead diaries, they're building that fan base. Uh, to eventually have a community built around them uh, and to launch. Is there a method to that madness? Is there a do or don't uh, with that type of thinking? Um, I I hear both sides of that argument is like, hey, you know, it's great. Yes, building interest early on. But if your game doesn't come out five years, there's such a thing as like, tiredness of your brand <laughs> yeah i mean you've, you've got to avoid you know fatigue of any type whether it be community fatigue or media fatigue it, it ultimately comes down to i think uh, a couple of really important points what type of game are you meeting making right if you're making like a 60 hour in-depth rpg with multiple characters choice consequences dialogue trees everything like that then you have more to talk about over the long term than you do if you're making a three-hour platformer um Community building is massively important, more so than ever before, I would say, because, you know, with the way that this with Valve and how Steam is changing its algorithm to promote released titles that are performing well, um, it's very difficult to acquire organic in-store traffic. And so really to be successful at, at launch now you have to have built a solid community foundation that you know x number of players really enjoy the game 
These are your core following, and they're going to go and buy the game on launch. One of the mistakes I see indie developers doing a lot of times is they'll get like these core followers on like a Discord. So say like they'll get like 200 followers on Discord, and they'll give them all free keys for supporting the game before it's out. And it's like, why would you do that when those are the people who will buy your game? Mm-hmm. You know, you don't need to convince them. They're the people who are already invested. Um, and so really, it's important to push the game in terms of social media and community growing um, as much as possible before launch. I think five years is a bit too extreme. Um but I think you have to give yourself enough time um, to be able to grow um, a community as much as possible. Now, how long does that actually take? It, it, it can vary. I think um, a year or two is fine. I think what's important is being consistent on social media, um, making sure that you're providing a really good experience for the community on places like Discord. So making sure you're interacting with the community, making sure that your social media isn't boring and just, you know, you're not using it as a, as a posting platform, you know, a posting board that we, it's all about you and just announcing, use it as a tool to engage people with instead. Um, and I think, you know, it does, you know, like I say, it doesn't have to be, particularly with social media, it doesn't have to be all about you all the time. Like you can just use it to outreach to people and to talk to people and say, you know, if a film comes out, like a new Marvel movie comes out, ask people what they thought about it. And you don't necessarily have to talk about your game all the time. Um, and that's a really good, and that's something I see people doing a lot of times is like you go on, you know, a Facebook page or a Twitter page and it's almost like reading a notice board. It's like, we're doing this this week. We're doing this this week, and and you know while that is interesting to some degree, um, it doesn't come across as particularly fun or human. Um, and I think that's what you need to really push forward is get people behind you in a human way, um, and that really pays off. <laughs>